Hello everyone. Welcome to Static GK quiz number 91. This video is aimed to help you with your central and state government job examinations. I'm Ritrisha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Demand of which among the following will be called as direct demand. Direct demand refers to demand for goods meant for final consumption. It is the demand for consumers goods like food items, ready-made garments and houses. In these options, wool for factory, wool for making gloves, weaving machine, these are all uh, middle tier stuff which are used to make further things. However, sweater is something that the consumer uses directly. Hence, the correct answer is sweater. Sales from domestic tariff area or DTA to SEZs are to be treated as which among the following? Domestic tariff areas or domestic tariff zones means an area within India that is outside the special economic zones or SEZs. So any area which is not under the jurisdiction of a custom bonded area is called a domestic tariff area. In both cases, the sales are exports. Which among the following is a correct expansion of EPCG? EPCG is Export Promotion Capital Goods Schemes that helps in facilitating the import of capital goods for manufacturing quality goods and to augment the competitiveness of India's export. EPCG scheme enables the import of capital goods that are used in pre-production, production and post-production without the payment of custom duties. Which among the following commodities is completely deregulated in India? Diesel, kerosene, these all have regulations attached. However, gasoline has none. In which among the following sector of Indian economy, the public sector is most prominent? Public transport remains the primary mode of transport for most Indian citizens and India's public transport systems are among the most heavily used in the world. As a result, the correct answer here would be transport. In fact, Indian Railways receives a humongous volume of commutators and is one of the largest employers in the world. At which among the following places India's first steel factory was established? The correct answer is Barnpur, which is in Asansol. So, uh, in 1870, a small plant was founded by James Erskine in the jungles of Kulti to make iron. This produced only cast iron, Starting off as Bengal Iron Works Company, it became Burakar Iron Works in 1881 and was renamed as Bengal Iron and Steel Company in 1890. Later, in 1926, the company again changed its name to Bengal Iron Company Limited. Which among the following industries in India provided employment maximum workers in comparison to the other three? So we don't need the uh, maximum employment done by any industry. We need the one among these options. So 60% of India's textile industry is cotton based. Here among jute, sugar, cotton textile and cement, cotton textile is the correct answer. They account for the largest sector of the textile production in India. This sector has a share of 62% of India's total production and provides employment to about 4.8 million people. What is India's rank in production of sugarcane? We are currently the second largest sugarcane producers in the world after Brazil. In fact, we have had a huge 10% jump or we are projecting a 10% jump between October 2018 and September 2019. And we are set to produce 35.5 million tons of sugar. This means we will unseat Brazil very soon. In how many zones Indian Railways has been divided? The correct answer is 17 zones. They are Central, Eastern, Northern, Northeastern, Southeastern, Northeast Frontier, East Central, East Coast, North Central, Northwestern, West Central, Southern, South Central, Southeast Central, Southwestern, Western. These are the 16 zones in the country. Other than that, Kolkata Metro is the 17 zone or is considered the 17 zone. Life Insurance Corporation of India is a corporation established by a special act of parliament. It is an Indian state-owned insurance group and investment company headquartered in Mumbai. In 1955, parliamentarian Amol Bharate 
raised the matter of insurance fraud by owners of private insurance agencies. The Parliament of India then passed the Life Insurance India Act on 19th June 1956, creating the Life Insurance Corporation of India, which started operating in September of that year. The nationalization of the life insurance business in India was a result of the Industrial Policy Resolution of 1956, which had created a policy framework for extending state control over at least 17 sectors of the economy, including life insurance. That's all for today's quiz. Until the next video, goodbye.